Alright, hi again guys. Uh, this is the third video in the LEGO tutorials. Uh, in front of you see all the parts you need to, uh, well I need to build a robot uh, to do basically what you guys are going to do in your assignment. Um, so as I said in my earlier videos, we need, uh, I build modularly. It's the best way to do it. Um, as you can see in front of you, these are all the different modules needed to build a robot. Uh, so there's one extra here. Uh, I built two. There's a Revolut and there's a Prismatic joint. Uh, just to show you examples of how this can be done. Um, yeah, so NXT is one module. Your base, um, first first joint, first um, joint is a Revolut. Uh, most likely always going to be Revolut. Second joint, Prismatic or another Revolut. And finally the pen holder which is all you've all seen before. Firstly, I'd like to start off talking about the first joint uh, and the use, mainly the use of the turret. Um, again, I mentioned earlier in the videos, um, I thought I'd just give you guys a little look at how, one example of how to use this turret. Um, you don't have to stick to this. Uh, it's highly recommended though. So, first up, the base attaches underneath here on, uh, on these pins. Um, and you can see the drive gear relative to uh, the turret gear uh, and this is pretty important uh, the ratio between the, uh, these two is quite important later on down the track um, and this is just a simple method one of the simpler methods of connecting the motor directly there you might want to put more reduction, less reduction uh, different setups here um, you might be thinking there's a fair bit of stuff sitting up here this is all to do with the connection of later modules uh, which are built up further on down the track. Uh, secondly, I'd like to explain the, uh, the prismatic setup that I've got, uh, that I've done. This uh, is applicable to you if you wanted to do a prismatic joint uh, to your assignment, but the one I've built is a little bit smaller. I haven't built it to the kind of size that you guys will need to go to, and there's a little bit more thinking that will have to happen uh, to get that to work, but, or else it will start becoming a bit flimsy because you have to join bricks together and stuff. Um, yeah, so the other thing with Prismatic is it can crash. So if you drive this motor for too long, it'll push this out and it'll basically break itself. So you'll have to be smart in your code to make sure it doesn't break itself. Um, thirdly, you can, you can stop that if you want. If you're feeling advanced, you can put a touch sensor that touch, that acknowledges when it's at, uh, home or zero. And then you can do a count to count how far out it is in or out. Um, or you can set it up to begin with. The simpler way to do it is make sure that it's the same position every time you um, start. So in a home position and then it'll be able to do it. Um, that would be the simpler way of doing it. So that's the prismatic joint. Uh, there is a lot of fiddling around to get this mechanism to work. I, it took me about half an hour of playing around um, to get these ratios between the, the base the bricks and the gears. Uh, if it feels clunky, it will be clunky. Um, try not to use a clunky setup. It, it just might hinder it, it might get stuck, you might not get reliable results. So uh, have a play around with your prismatic joint. Make sure it's all good. Uh, before you use it, this is a little bit harder than you'd think to do. It's easier on the math side of things in the programming, but building it uh, and getting it to work took a little bit more time than uh, I expected it to. So make sure you factor in that when you're developing this setup, if, you, if you're going down prismatic road. Um, okay, thirdly, I'd like to talk about my Revolut setup. So this is the Revolut setup. You can see it here. Uh, pretty simple. This bit connects back into the um, robot, the base. sits on top like that. Uh, and this is the, where you join up your pen attachment. Um, so the main thing I've designed in this one is that you can you can spin it 360 degrees and it won't crash. So your pen won't hit anything um, and it overhangs out the front of your robot. Again, this is still a little bit under scale compared to what you guys need to do. So you'll have to do some more thinking if you want to go down this road. But it is very possible to do this um, kind of setup. So this is the third third module I wanted to show you. Um, just a, just an example. Most of our examples will be based on the prismatic example, though. But uh, I'll show you, it's a good setup. Uh, 
just remembering that this will be quicker than the prismatic if you're going down the speed route when you come to, oh well it could be quicker, um, when you go to finish your assignment. Uh, okay, so that's the revolute. Alright, so let's uh, build this robot, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. Nice little compact unit. Looks, it looks quite good actually, I'm proud of it. Uh, so the base basically just clicks into the bottom of the turret. Uh, do a little uh, sides to it. It's nice and wide as well, I had to make it a little bit wider, it was getting a little bit unstable. Uh, but yeah, that, that works quite well. So the base straight into the turret, and I'll start this off with the revolute joint, and then I'll finish up with... Uh, um, with the prismatic joint which we'll use in the end. Um, you can just click on the pen uh, attachment, simple as that, it attaches straight on um, and then yeah, this just goes straight onto this part of the robot as I was describing in my earlier uh, videos about the modular design and how easy it should be just to click everything together. Uh, Yeah. That swings down into that position. It's all held together. Quite sturdy now. Uh, you can see some resemblance of a robot sitting there. Move that down for me. Uh, that's what it is. Revolute, revolute. Everything. And it also the pen doesn't hit. Um, and the NXT, quite ingenious. Just goes straight onto the side there. Uh, like that. And plug your two motors in. Second, just like to keep the numbering uh, normal. Second joint B, first joint A. Keeps your program simple. And that's a robot. That's how you build it from scratch. Finally, I'll uh, just take it apart and put the uh, prismatic joint on and show you what that looks like. So, yeah, first module off. Unplug them. Uh, Okay, with it there. Uh, second module. Just everything should just unclick quite easily. Uh, let that go out of there. Ah. Uh, One of mine's a little bit trickier to get on. It works just the same. Uh, make sure that goes back on. And that guy in there. And that's sturdy now. Uh, let's remove that pin. Alrighty, uh, again, same kind of setup. Very close to the the other one. Uh, second resolute joint. Oh, second joint in there. First joint in there. And just bring this pen attachment over. Click it on the front. Uh, and this is the robot that we'll be showing you some demos on. Uh, this guy's got the prismatic on it. This the extends out, comes back in. Quite cool. Just wanted to go over some of the uh, design principles uh, and concepts that I went through when I was building this robot. Uh, the main, the main thing you might notice is that the NXT is up the top. Uh, a lot of people think uh, lower center of gravity is better. Not really a big issue in this. Uh, design because uh, it's so small there's no real issue and it doesn't spin that fast so things don't really get fly don't go flying uh, it's also off center which I thought might be a problem but it actually turned out quite well it doesn't seem to have any issues of balance or anything like that um, the main reason it's up top is so that it'll never crash so this robot can spin as many times as it wants push its uh, 
arm out as many times as it wants. And it won't crash. Oh, well, the prismatic part will. Uh, a little bit of coding in that. Uh, the Revolute, if this was put on top, uh, the, the Revolute also won't crash. And it won't crash with the robot. Um, took a little bit of thinking to get that done. But it's well worth it when it comes to the coding side of things. Just you don't have to muck around with anti-crash code or tangling of wires. That's another big one that people overlook. Yeah, that's uh, one of the main design considerations when it came to this robot. Um, secondly, another thing to stress to you guys is that a base is important. Make sure your base is sturdy, won't uh, unclick or anything. Uh, I, I recommend making them out of these kind of bricks, not the traditional Lego bricks where you build on top because they kind of just break off if you don't use them properly. So these guys are quite good for that uh, kind of system. So I hope this is a good little guide into how to build your robot. Obviously your one will have to be a little bit bigger, uh, different uh, aspects your your page is a lot bigger than what we're going to demonstrate to you but you get the gist of what this robot's all about and what uh, what you can do with it